Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to, by the way, from now on, pretend that people actually watch my stream. So, number one, I'm going to address you as though you're a loyal, loyal viewer, uh, although there is no such thing. I, and right now, no one's listening. Uh, so I'm just going to go sort of crazy on this, and from now on, pretend that I have a loyal audience, uh, just and not just the voices in my head. Okay, yesterday I tried to um, yesterday I tried to convert floating point numbers. Sorry, uh, four floating point numbers 30, flo 32, meaning four bytes of data, into floating point numbers in Perl, and I assumed uh, that it was just basically a case of uh, converting it to an integer and then dividing. In other I tried to reverse engineer that and I failed. And it turns out uh, there's a good reason I failed. It's because floating point numbers are stored not quite as easily as I thought they were. It's not difficult, but it is going to require a little work. So I did find a URL to, um, that tells you how to do this. It's six lines of code. shouldn't be very difficult. Um, unfortunately, I can't seem to drag and drop a URL into uh, uh, into the virtual box. Um, and I think it's because I, I do have the uh, bi-directional cut and paste checked, but I don't think I have guest editions installed on this uh, VM. And to be honest, I'm not sure how much I want to be cutting and pasting between my real machine and this machine. There's a little bit of a danger there uh, that I want to avoid. Um, cool tip about uh, virtual box, which most of you probably know, you can actually save the state in the middle while the, while the computer's running. Uh, so I actually shut down this machine yesterday, but I saved the state, brought it up today, and we're just beautifully in X-Windows. We didn't have to start anything, reload anything, nothing. All the, Everything comes up just beautifully. So tip for VirtualBox, you can freeze it right when it's running and bring it up. It'll be you know, exactly the same, but of course nothing in the world is exactly the same twice. There's a some sort of weird law about that, a physical law. Okay, so I'm going to just type in this URL, uh, 7703 stack. And yep, I knew that was going to work. It's going to be question seven. And did I get it wrong? Yes. Seven seven zero three four two. Yay. Question. But I mean, it's not going to be hard to find this. And and I'm just going to be very very lax with this. And okay, now zza question zza. See, you would think they would improve this and just let you get away with this. Okay. So he's doing it the ugly way, and as I pointed out, you could have done it with unpack. Um, it's just, hi actually, I don't think this works. Um, now he found a way that works very ugly. Uh, the correct answer we want is going to be, I guess I could have, in theory, gone um, gone to this answer directly. But this is the correct way of doing it, I, and this is because of the way floating point numbers are stored. It is not a trivial sort of thing. Um, so let's go over here. Let's go back to our little pop center. Uh, now, of course, uh, put this function into, this is going to be a good, this is a really good general function to have. Um, let's see. I want stir to, stir to float. Yeah, that's, that name is confusing enough. Okay, and this is the standard Perl how it passes parameters. Does that look like a double line? Wow. Or did I just screw that up? Okay, for some reason that looks like an at with a double line after it, but it's, it's a single line. Okay, so now let's cut and paste his code. And I'm lazy. Oh, I don't want to cut and paste too much of that crap. I was going to say I'm lazy, so I'm going to cut and paste some of his non code too, which is fine. But um, I was don't want to post his whole uh, copy paste his whole message. So we'll do this. We'll do this. We will do. Um, by the way, you'll notice real program, uh, real pro programmers, do not use um, parentheses around when they declare a my variable, like I do. Uh, that is because I suck. Okay. Um, let's see. So he is going with the assumption that we already have converted into um, into an array of four digits. Which, let's see. So he's actually picking this up from. Um, I think this guy's code here. Uh, let's see. I'm actually wondering if you could left shift bytes directly. Um, it's well, it's interesting actually. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, but clearly, you at least need to get down to the bytes part of it. Um, 
Uh, I think we can do that fairly easily by just saying my bytes equals split on nothing dollar sign val and now we have an array so we can just say I'm going to say my, no I'm going to say my bytes so bytes, no this is just an array bytes one bytes another one bites the dust <laughs> That's the kind of wacky humor, the wacky lack of humor you're going to get on my, um, you're going to get on my uh, stream. Or, uh, oh right, because I'm assuming we, we have people who are actually watching this. Let's clean this up a little bit here. So this is your basic uh, shift. And now, and I'm going to do it my way, which is basically adding parentheses. Sign. Expo. That's exponent mantissa, which I don't know what the hell that is. I, I should know what the hell that is. I do know what the hell that is. I just don't remember right now. And because we're copying and pasting code, I'm not going to try to clean it up too much. But this is kind of what we want. So now, before we do anything else, let's test this code. Um, nice die testing here. All right. So what do we want to convert? Stir to float A, B, C, D. I have no idea what that value is going to be, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah, it would be good if we actually did something with it, huh? All right. What? Well, second time's a charm. Um. Yeah, this is this is good because I have no idea if that's right or wrong. So that that's always helpful. Um, so let's assume it's right. Go into our program will tell us. We we sort of know what the population count should look like uh, from yesterday's QGIS session. And also we we know in general there are about eight billion people uh, living in the world. So if we add them up, we should get eight billion. Uh, not that we're going to, but if if and when. Okay. So now. I want to back up this code, but I cannot save it to GitHub because um, I have conflicts with the main branch. So I'm going to do something really ugly. I wrote a program called QuickBack, and what it does is it looks at the difference between this pro. Well, you can read it; it's in my Git. Uh, between this program do that um, let me see if that that should now say yeah if I do it with debug I'm hoping it's working uh, well we're gonna actually check because this is a new machine I don't want to screw things up too badly okay and actually this debug pretty much tells me it is working what it basically does as you can see is it checks the current file against the stored file if the timestamps match, it does nothing. If the timestamps don't match, which won't happen here because we just did it, uh, it'll do. It'll store the diff of the of the uh, of the two files, the old and the new. So it doesn't use up too much room, and it gives you a pretty good history of what's what's going on with the file. Uh, Git does that too, but I can't use Git here because uh, I'm stupid. Because I I really need to fix all of these sort of different branches on REPL, this machine, my real machine, and and sort of glue them together. But uh, that is not interesting work, so I don't do it. Okay, so let's go back over here now, and let's see. And you know, I think this actually is wrong, um, because there are only 21,600 rows of latitude. So it's quite possible everything else we were doing yesterday is correct, but um, this sh was still wrong. And now I'm going to be paranoid and say, is it 21,600 times 2 is 42,200, 42, good, yeah, we're good. Okay, so I think that's correct now. And uh, this is our, oh, yeah. So now we will do something really ugly, which is, uh, let's, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to go back to where we're seeking into A. Hey, where is that? Oh, here we are. Oh, did I restore it? Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Um, and that's, we're going to ignore this part. Um, uh, 
ignoring that grid for now. Uh, of course, that the program doesn't know what I'm doing there, but that's for ourselves here. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, we have uh, buff, and if I am correct, I'm usually not, but if I am, uh, buff is going to be four characters, and we could say my um, val equals stir to float. Is that what I called it? Of course, it's this is one of the few cases it would be good to have an IDE, but usually I don't have a problem with that. Um, buff. And now what we want to print out, or debug actually, is all this crap, except we are going to hope that val is correct. And if it is, we're in good shape. Um, reversed from usual order to cut paste. Is copy pasta the same thing as cut paste? Is it just a funny way of saying it? I don't know. I was going to say copy pasta, but cut and paste into OSM because OSM does want the latitude longitude in that order. I mean, it'll, it'll give you both, but the default is latitude longitude. Okay, groovy. Um, let's see. And we are using randomization, which is actually good because testing on sequentially is really kind of ugly because you could have something that only shows up deep in the file somewhere. Well, you know, I'm going to just call this BC pop count because it is going to do that too. Um, let's just look at it. Um, okay. I think that is... I think that's wrong, actually. I was going to say I think that's the zero value, which will show up in many, many places, of course. Two-thirds of the our planet is covered in, in ocean, water. But that's too much for two-thirds. Also, I think over here I did... Um, I did actually... Well, we can act we'll just test this stuff. Isn't it amazing? And I think I should probably... Not... I probably need to not be declaring these here. Uh, um, even though I actually got kicked off a Discord server for arguing um, that they should be declared before the loop, not inside the loop, because it's inefficient to redeclare a variable inside the loop. But it turns out it's not really that inefficient. Um, and it's kind of nice to declare a variable just as you use it. Again, I d I'm not going to consistently follow that. That, especially in C, it get can get really ugly. But, but I'll go ahead and do that here if you know if time permits, which it won't. All right. So what I um, what I want to do here is um, I want to see if you can actually apply the uh, I want to see if you can actually apply the uh, left shift operator to characters, and I suspect that you cannot. zero, so that's not good, because A would be like, oh, I wonder if you can apply it to characters, but not to strings. Wow. Wowzers, Uncle Gadget. Uh, um. And that's, that's like, uh, no. Which is actually kind of good, because you really don't want to be applying this stuff like this to characters. You really want to ord these out first, so let's see. So, my val equals... Uh, I'm pretty sure this won't work because um, the re return thing from split is, not, is immutable. But also, I don't care. Yes. Wow. And I'm pretty sure that huge value you're seeing is actually um, is actually infinite uh, is actually the zero value. So the problems we're seeing here is we're getting numbers that are minuscule, uh, like e to the minus. Well, that's not too bad actually. E to the minus 07, e to the minus 08. We got one there that's. Uh, I think that's yeah. That's going to probably be the default value. So are we? Well, it looks like uh, the the. Um, it looks like the uh, conversion of bytes didn't didn't fail. Okay. 
it's, I, I, I think this is going to be fine, actually. So apparently you can, um, you know, what do I know? Apparently you can modify the result of a, of a, um, <coughs> excuse me, of a uh, split res return. Okay. And then my hat, these values do not look really good to me. Um, I do not think we have this many, uh, negative people living anywhere. So maybe sign. Okay, you know what? This is actually an unsigned float 32. Boy, say that three times fast. Um, because of course there are not negative people. Well, there are, but the government's hiding them from us. So, um, so there aren't negative people, so these numbers will always be positive, so it's probably here we go, boys and girls. Unsigned float 32 pearl. Unsigned long 32 bit. <laughs> Little Indian <laughs> order. Woo ha! Um. Okay, and I don't know if this uh, float 32 is actually a double precision number. I don't know the endedness of this. I don't know if the big ones are at the front or the back. I think they're at the back, actually, in this case. Um, oh, which would actually be a thing to try before trying this. Um, and he actually warns us there. And you know what? Let's give some credit where credit is due. Oh, did we lose him? Did we lose our friend? No, we still have him in here. So let's see if we can just bring him up using 770. Booyah. And again, this is not really necessary because everything in Everything he does, he does it for us. Okay. Yep. That's what I get for cutting and pasting. Minus minus debug, pipe to less. Um, yeah, still not getting the kind of numbers we, we want. Um, although I think the negative well, actually, maybe we are getting the numbers we want. But these aren't densities. And the minus three, I'm in, well, that's too many of them, though. Alrighty. We're going nuts here. And actually, I should have debugged them after the reversal, but that's fine. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, floating point values can store numbers up to... Sprint F. Um, so Sprint F will convert a number into, I think, floating point format, but I don't think it'll go the other way. Come on. Okay. And this might, my problem might be that I'm calling it a float when at this point it's, um, okay. Let's go back over here. Unsigned double, not float 32. Um, first approach to pack number to unsigned short. All right. Getting sick of this. Let me check to see if there's any users in chat. I'll be surprised if there are. Nope, none of, at least none that uh, have not come in recently. Okay, so we have all this nice sort of, uh, we have this nice breakup that this guy gave us. Let's go ahead and put some of that in. Um, and that should maybe kind of help us figure out what we're doing. Um, 
I mean, it probably won't, but... Uh, but who knows, it might be a trivial error that we can figure out with just looking at stuff. Okay, sine minus one, sine minus. Okay, so we're pretty sure that uh, uh, that uh, you know uh, we're not. We never want to sign negative one. So they're probably using uh, the the first um, the first byte just to be the exponent. But we don't really want exponents that big either. So that's kind of weird. Mantissa. Uh, Mantissa looks like w what we might actually want, kind of. Um, Okay, so let's see. Okay, well, back to the drawing board, or the browser as it is. Pearl, convert float 32 to double <laughs> um, string. Let's see what that does. Okay, this is actually a di different answer. Stir. Um, sprintf. I don't think this is going to have what we want yet. Yeah, it's not. Um, Uh, this is actually not what we want either. Scripting with objects. And I don't really want to understand the unpack function. It is very... Um, it's not what we want, though. Yeah, and see, this is... This looks like the sort of the... Let's go look at this again. It's quite possibly had some caveats in there we didn't look at. Or we can use somebody else's. Um, yeah, pack, shift, blah, 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 blah. Well, we might have to use that one. It's, it also may not work. Um, Okay, this is actually probably the uh, uh, okay. Well, this actually is really, really nice. It's one liner. Let's try that. That I probably should have tried that first. I will admit that this is a that that, that is a better answer. Um. We still need to do the. We still need to split this into numerical bytes. I think. Um, do we? No, they're hex bytes. So let's fix that. And if this works, we will obviously clean up some of the commented out code. Um, so we just need this to be split. And then because we are subverting the rest of the function, just return float. Alrighty. Uh, whatever time we're on is the charm, is what you're supposed to say at this point. Um, unfortunately, zero is a going to be a valid value for a lot of the world, although not this much of the world. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Um, map equal, okay, no, we're actually, we're actually nexting out before we do any of that. So my value, okay, the buff, and convert the buff. Um, all right, let's do this, but let's hope that this doesn't really, this doesn't really um, screw us over. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, good. We, we still have stuff. Um, 
Unfortunately, the numbers we're getting here are many, many fractional. So they might be using a custom format to store, which they shouldn't be doing, but who knows. Um, and maybe I'm being stupid because we are using a GeoTIFF, so maybe float32 is uh, stored differently in, in GeoTIFFs. Um, Uh, let's see what we want here. Float 32. Okay. I don't know what C float 32 is, but hopefully. Okay. Alright, maybe we're getting closer here. Now, there is, like I said, a really, really ugly way to do it that's so ugly, I, I just really want to avoid it. Uh, there are other ways to convert. Instead of converting to uh, this uh, E header format that I'm using and trying to figure that out, there are other ways to convert this data. Uh, and in fact, there are quite a few ways to convert this data. Uh, GD Translate is the magic program that does this. Um, and the output formats it supports, let's see, quite a, quite a few of them. And the format is guessed. Format does not. Let's see if this is a. Woo! That didn't work. Uh, here we go. Raster drivers. This might actually be available from the GDL info itself. But these are the ones that it can convert to and from. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is at all useful. Um, AIG binary grid, that might be what we want. And a lot of these look like they're image files and they can be used that way, but they're actually more open than that, it turns out. You can use them to fit fits, which I should understand because I'm an astronomer, but I don't because I'm not an astronomer. Grass ASCII 2, see the thing I'm trying to avoid here is uh, the ASCII 2 format, but we might have to create it uh, just to see um, just to see how, you know, just to get confirmation actually that this works. ASCII grid at XYZ. Let's try... I'm fairly happy with AEI grids uh, text format except it's huge. Let's try ARC info binary grid, AIG. Okay. So convert... No, GD... Sorry, convert is for uh, image magic. GD I'll translate minus output format AIG. Um... I think that's all I need. Um, pop count. Oh, I'm not actually where I need to be. Hang on, let's get over there. Um, 2019, yesterday was 1204. So what we want here is GDAL translate minus output file output format AIG. And we'll do pop count dot. Well, actually, no, we should do the original TIFF. I mean, that's going to be. Jesus Christ. Population count dot tiff. And of course they did not specify a target data set because I'm a moron. One more time. And we'll just call it temp dot AIG. Ooh, unshiny. No create method implemented for this driver. So in other words, well it's pretty big. You can, even though it understands this format, it's not going to create something in this format. Well, you suck. Um, Digitize arc info binary grid. <sighs> Better portable graphics. Uh, see, uh, how optimized GeoTIFF. In theory, you could read a GeoTIFF directly, and I'm tempted to see if their CPAN has something that lets me do that. As I get more and more curious, Not really military elevation data. This is the function one we're using right now. Um, oh, fit and fits are different. I didn't know that. Generic binary. Let's go with that because that could be even worse than what we have now. Was that Genbin? 
Is it a different, uh... It was Jin Min. It, I don't think the casing is going to matter. Okay, well you suck. No create method implemented for this one. Okay, well, nobody, boys and girls, because I'm still pretending. Let's go to CPAN and see if we have a, um, something we can use a GeoTIFF interpreter, as it were. Uh, read data and extract shape from tiled GeoTIFF. Um, is this tiled? Wow, only three, um, results. Now the question is, is there an image GeoTIFF? You would think that because of the way they have this, because it looks like a directory and stuff, there would be an image GeoTIFF, but th not necessarily. Okay, let's see. Um, okay. I'm going to do something. I'm going to see if I actually have image GeoTIFF in some of my code. So let's do... Uh, Because I vaguely remember using this before. And and I did. So there you go. And now <laughs> it's kind of sad that I actually have a program that does it and I didn't remember. Okay, attempts to read a TIFF without loading into memory. This is a 100 gigabyte TIFF. Did you know that? Um, dump last time. So there's nothing here that tells you whether it's not, whether it's working or not working. Always, always good to know that. Um, and it might not even, well, it might or might not work on this machine. I don't know if I've installed GeoTIFF tiled by default. I probably have, actually. I'm pretty good about that, but uh, let's see. So, the only thing to change here... is the TIFF name. And this time, because we're in a vert. And did I actually call this pop count? Die? I hope I did. No, I didn't. I should. I'm going to rename the frickin' huge one to uh, something much smaller. Population, blah blah blah. Dot tiff. Uh, no, this might break because it, there's auxiliary information that it. Oh. I'll go ahead and do it, but we might need to use the full name because. Um, because it has auxiliary information that Pearl may need. All right. BC read TIFF. Minus, minus debug. Yep, I'm a moron. I do not have, um, I do not have a GeoTIFF tiled installed anywhere. Um, let me check something, because I, I need to fix something if that's really the case. Because I do have a, a thing that's supposed to install all of this. Um, I have graphics TIFF, but I do not have... Let me see what I do have for TIFF. I have image geo TIFF tiled. Okay, so it's actually supposed to have installed. You know, I should be able to do it just by running... Oh, this is dangerous. I thought I'd run this already. Um... These are the C pans on. Oh yeah. By the way, the password here is ABC one two three. Or let's be really fancy here and do this. And this will take a little bit of time. Um, so. Let's see if we can do something productive during this time, but if we can't, we can't. Uh, again, there's nobody here, so I'm talking to my imaginary audience. Um, this always looks really ugly, but it usually works anyway. So this is going to be helpful. Um, there's a lot of other data we can get and you know, for different things. 
Um, most of it I have on my main machine, and I don't want to get it simply for the sake of of getting it on this machine. I can R sync it over or something, which is much much better. Um, okay. So that looked like it didn't go well, but it might have gone well enough for us to. Um, And you might say, well, if it didn't work the first time, why would it work better the second time? And the answer to that question is, I don't know, but it sometimes does. We might get a different error, we might get the same error, but for some reason CPAN is not, does not do its dependencies exactly okay. I can't read that yellow. Okay. Just one more time, if this still doesn't work, we'll just try to install the one package we actually need. And when I said one time more, I might do it again. Okay, something still failed. All right. One thing that bugs me about CPAN that I'm going to complain about as we do this is it really, to me, should be CPAN install. It, CPAN by itself will do the install, but that's kind of... Oh, 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 oh. The root directory is okay, propagated in it failed. Compilation, um, not okay. Um, so we're probably missing a library or something, which we shouldn't be, by the way. Geotiff.h, okay. So now I really should see what the hell is going on in my main machine, why this didn't work. But let's do something clever here. Let's say sudo yum provides. We want to see what thing provides geotiff, if anything. There might be nothing in this in my rep repos that provide this. And there's... Okay. There it is. Uh, why is this not on my list of things to install? Um, it is. And again, I don't know why it didn't get installed. Uh, and uh, because there, the errors might have been caused by multiple packages, it's possible that this still will work. So, I'm, I'm happy to be wasting your time today. I wonder if this shell has 63,000 lines right now. I'm wondering if it ever uh, decides to kind of clear itself, otherwise this buffer will get larger and larger. Not that I care. Okay, so if this works... So th we're now three levels nested. If this works, we can install the CPAN that we need which means we can run the program that we need to see if we know how to read floating point values from a float32 geotiff directly, which would be a great benefit because I don't really want to convert it into other formats. In fact, if I can do that, I could probably, uh, it's probably going to help me in other ways too because I have other data in geotiff format that I have converted. Uh, the N16 stuff I can read pretty well, so that's not, a, that's not an issue. Um, but but it will, there's other stuff that I could be reading with the with GeoTIFF directly, because that is usually the format that is distributed in. So this is taking longer than I expected. It is a VM, but it should be this freaking slow. Uh, let's see. I'm actually just going through my email, and I can tell you, um, it's boring. Oh. 
package them <laughs> geotiff already installed in latest version oh isn't that beautiful uh, oh boy I'm gonna give up after this fails okay um problems go. So it's not, it might not be my include path. Okay, so if I were being really ugly, which I might go ahead and be, find where that file is and it would be good to have done that as a pseudo huh and add it to the include path although this is getting so ugly that it's no longer really about uh, geo tiffs and it's no longer about finding the center of the population for each country so um, we're getting um, user include libgeotiff. Okay, I'm going to do something bad now. Instead of um, instead of adding this to the include path, I am going to copy all of its H files upstairs. And again, I really need to do stuff like this as root. So now they should be found in the wrong location. And uh, this is not recommended because it is the wrong way to do it, but it's also, it probably won't even work, so it's not like it's a huge deal. Um, well, it's, uh, oh, apparently I need to do the ink files as well. La 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 la. So if you are, uh, you know, looking for some uh, Unix debugging tips, these aren't them. But at least it looks like it's going to compile now. The reason this is really bad is if I ever upgrade GeoTIFF or whatever, um, it's not going to upgrade in the right place. But apparently that worked. Uh, okay, I've seen this problem with... Uh, with image magic as well, because the geotiff is using a four byte field, it, it somehow gets confused. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to fix that. Okay. So now we're gonna do the ugly thing I don't wanna do, and which might fill up my actual main disk, because it is so ugly. Um, let me check really quickly off in my main machine if I have a um, a smaller GeoTIFF file that um, is also has float32 as its type because that would be a lot uh, better to deal with. How do I not? Oh, because it's not TIF. Um... I want to uh, actually let me see because the a lot of most a lot of a lot of and most at the same time um, tiffs use like an integer or something that's that's smaller than a, a four width float. Um, so let me see. I, you know, I don't think this is actually going to be that useful. I'm going to try it on one file I have that might be a biodiversity file that might use fractional numbers. Um, no, it uses bytes. Okay. So we have a GeoTIFF file. We don't know how to... I don't think it's going to be... Let me double check, but I don't think it's going to be like raw bytes either. I think it has been... It, well, they say it's been compressed, LZW compressed. I might be able to turn it into LS, LZW uncompressed. Um, not sure, but... Um,
Okay, let's look at those formats again. I, we're gonna have to. I think we might just have to bite the bullet and convert it to AAI grid, and then figure out. I mean, we can't use it like that. I mean, I'm not going to. Um, Let's see. Oh, that's and that actually said IEEE 754. This is OpenStreetMap. Um, I might, did I get rid of that? No, that's not that wasn't good of me. Okay. Um, so let's just uh, GDAL translate. Output formats. And let's bookmark Mr. Page here. Okay. To and AA grid is the thing I'm trying to avoid because this is a huge, huge file. Uh, but I mean, ASCII will, of course, give us the results we need, unless th this TIFF is even worse than I think it is. And turning it to an AI grid doesn't work. Uh, they actually did have AAI Grid listed as a download option over here. Um, and now you might think, you know, of course I'm not going to waste any, you, I'm going to do this, aren't I? And I think if I remember correctly, the AAI Grid is actually in... Um, hello? Okay, hang on. Let me refresh this page. Oh yeah, here it is. And I think that was one of the options. ASCII 2, resolution of 30 seconds, create download. And... Alrighty. Oh yeah, I think I actually have to open another tab. Okay. So now we're very unhappy. And also, we need to change the right directory. Let's take a look at the most recent files here. Yeah, oh. I downloaded it twice. I'm a moron. Um, and if I remember correctly, I'm almost sure the, um, the V4 National Identifier Grids. Why did I download the National Identifier Grids? So, wow, I sort of pulled a double badness there. I downloaded the wrong thing and I downloaded it twice. I am very proud of myself. So now let's go back to what we actually wanted to download, which is um, the uh, the actual population data. Uh, this is ancillary data, or ancillary, depending on how you pronounce the word ancillary. Um, One kilometer. Is there a better one than one kilometer? Um, data quality indicators and then water area. Population count. I think this is the one I got last time. Um, I don't know what downscaled for SSP is, but I don't like the word downscaled. So I think we're going to use uh, this one. Um, I think this is, I do remember this being close to the end here. All right, so we're going to go for the UN WPPP blah, 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 blah. All right. Um, ASCII. Resolution, 30 seconds. And you might think, why am I doing single ear and then doing a zip? It turns out the other way doesn't work. Tried it once, didn't work. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, that these are sometimes distributed in multiple files because these things are freaking huge, which is why I wanted to avoid using them. And now I'm going to go ahead and, since this work is significantly different, I'm going to put it in, create a new directory with today's date on it in a European-friendly fashion because I do have MMDD. Um, and these are going to take a while to download. These suckers are not only huge, they're very, very ugly. Uh, the only benefit I have here is if I converted it directly from TIFF to AAI Grid, um, 
it would be even worse than it is right now. I know you find that hard to believe, but, but it's true. Uh, because converting is actually harder than downloading in this case. It's unfriendly, but you know, I, I hate everyone. So it's okay. Alrighty, this is going to take a little while here. Um, we could probably watch the progress here on uh, on Firefox. Okay, not that you know watching makes it any slower or faster, but uh, some point I'm hoping to go back to my videos and. Um, sort of cut out junk like this and just make it like more succinct and educational. Uh, currently I plan to do that 523 years from now, so I probably won't be around. And if I am around, I want to you know, sort of verify that I'm not making a commitment to do that. Uh, although by that time we might have like 3D experiences or something instead of videos. So people might just... who knows. I'm trying to kill time until these downloads finish. And we only really need one to look at it, and um, and then in theory, once we look at it, if we can get like some numbers for some, uh, you know, if we can get this is reverse engineering stuff, but if we can get some numbers for some uh, for some of the values that, that are not trivial, um, we can actually work on our own conversion then from the geo from the EHDR file, not the GeoTIFF file, which is compressed, and then maybe we could even go as far as uh, fixing the geotiff file G getting data directly from the geotiff file but let's not go crazy Lucy oh shoot I actually only need to download the 2021 so um, let me be nice and cancel these wow that's like a whole bunch of mistakes in a short span of time uh, so I'm going to remove all the .part files, but of course this is currently a .part file until it a few seconds left. Seven and after seven it becomes a few, because apparently that's that's how we count in, in Firefox. Alright, let me go to downloads real quickly and remove... Oh, you know what? Firefox might be good enough to actually um, do that for me. Nice. Uh, so we're going to take the ASCII version, and Q, Q, and put that into the directory of the day. I, I, you're asking why do I do that? Well, you know, why does anyone do anything? It's just easier for me to work with it here. And now let me unzip minus L it. Come on, only one file here. Yeah, and I do remember this happening before too. Because it's so huge, they actually break it up into eight parts. Um, but, and, but that's the only way we can, we can look at it. And again, this is going to take some time, and I'm, I'm now sort of questioning whether it would have taken less time to convert the, uh, geotest to an AA grid field. The one nice thing about that is it would be one big, big file instead of, like, eight big files, but less big files. Um, and these files are going to be big enough, I don't think I can load them in Emacs, even if I ignore the warning about not loading l large files. Uh, even though they're in eight pieces. Yeah, so you'll notice that this is a 750, 650... Oh, only 700 megabytes, not over a gigabyte. Um, uh, you know, I'm sort of tempted to do that now, but... Oh yeah, GPW. This... This might actually break the virtual machine. So prepare to be... Um, Bedazzled. No, that's not the right word. One. Really big, yeah, let's do it. Show me what you got, Emacs. Mother fudger. It did it. Okay, and by the way, the, um, we're at minus 80, and this is really at zero. Uh, which means we are at not the left edge of the world. We are, sorry, we are at the equator, um, at the leftmost point of the equator. So what these are going to be here... Uh, 
Okay, this is... I probably should not have done this. Um, yeah, right now my cursor is sort of... It, this This is one huge line, by the way. This is a line that has 43,000... Well, let's actually see how many rows it has. It has 10,800 rows in it. Um, so... No data value. Um, and, and the problem is there's so much non-land. Uh, well, actually, hang on. We're at the equator. Um, and we're going as far as 10,000. We're going fourth of the way across. Yeah, this is probably one of the least populated portions of the world. So that was... I'm actually really surprised that it let me do that. Okay. Alright, so what are we going to do? Well... We're deep in booty land now. I don't know what that means. We're going to try to find a file. Okay, we're going to find the first instance of a non minus nine 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 in these files because that's going to be the file we kind of want to load. Um, I th no, actually, that's not going to work because we we need we need a, a line that has something other than minus nine 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 nine. Uh, but it can have as many other, and it can have other 999s in it. So how are we going to do this? Um, Pro to the rescue, maybe? Um, now we could do a grep minus V for, you know, minus 9999 repeated 10,600 times. I don't even think grep will handle that, because I think grep is actually, it has a limit to the buffer of the thing you can grep for. Um, and I don't think it'll actually handle files that have uh, lines that long either, to be to be honest. Um, so what are we going to do about this? All right. Well, actually, I'm surprised that the one wasn't the one I. Okay, three, four. Did I? Oh, do I mean zero? No, I mean one. Do I mean two? Did I do? Let's just do four. I don't know why. It seems like a good number. Hell yeah. So now that you've told me you can load files that are close to a gigabyte in size, I'm going to make you do it. Um, okay. I think if I use control E, I end up at the end of this line. Nice. Um, not helpful, but nice. So I guess what I'm looking for here is a... Somewhere in this data, if there's a decimal point, we're in good shape. Obviously, in the header there. <coughs> uh, I could do a line count here and actually figure out where this is. Now, the, the problem we're having here is why are these numbers... This, this is a population count. So why is this number so low? Um, it might be reasonable, but I mean... It, it's hard to believe there's five ten thousandths of a person living somewhere. Even if you allow for stuff like averaging out. Um, so this is, a uh, this confuses me. Um, now if we go into line number mode, uh, we were in line number mode. It's just our mode line is so freaking big now, you can't see the line number. Um, well... There's a way to actually just get it out of, out of Emacs. Uh, let's see. There's a way to do this. Um, I'm going to do it the wrong way in just a sec. Don't worry. Um, let's see. Let's actually look for a bigger value. It's if there's a three point anywhere there. Ooh, okay. These numbers are too small, which means... Actually, this is the file they gave us. So what the hell does this mean? And there should be even a 3-2 in this somewhere. 
Uh, I meant 3-2 point, but sure. Yeah. Oh, these are nice looking numbers. I don't know what the hell they mean. Alright, let's actually go back then to, uh... Oh, excuse... Whoa! Oh yeah, because the Y command actually just repeats the y letter Y many, many times. <sighs> okay. Alright, so actually, uh, since these guys gave us this data, uh, let's see how well... Oh! There's something called documentation. Let's see if I've already downloaded it. This might be the key here, is to read what's known as documentation. Uh, it's not found very often. Actually, it's not true. It is. Okay, let me see if I've downloaded the documentation. I know I have it on my main machine. But, um... Beautiful. Okay, boys and girls. Let's read some documentation. Uh, did I... I've made my downloads very quiet now, so I don't know if that actually started a download or that just was unhappy with me. Uh, here it is. And... Yeah, this is, this is good stuff, I mean... So people who don't waste 10 hours trying to figure out a format, uh, this is how they work. So let's see what's in here. Oh, there's a text version! Very nice! So I don't really like PDFs. Never have. Probably never will. And I can just, I can actually just log it into Emacs. Um... Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is that, uh... That's a log revision. It's in text. Uh, and then this... Okay, so the... Okay, the documentation is only in PDF. I'm pretty sure that, um... Uh, Emacs can handle PDFs, and I'm... I will now be stunned for 10 seconds. That is really freaking cool. That was in 10 seconds, I know. That is really freaking cool. I mean, that is really freaking cool. Emacs gets better and better... every day. Alright. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Data set descriptions. Use constraints. Data revision history. I'm going to look here, but the problem is I'm pretty sure this is... Um, actually, this is the one we're looking at. Uh, count. But I'm pretty sure this is going to tell us how to use that data, unfortunately. Oh, come on, let me click. Page 15, okay. And I could have just tried to jump, I know. Okay. Documentation, data set. These formats are each downloadable compressive file containing... Uh, by the way, I'm just reading this, so if I'm muttering, it's uh, nothing you need to be worried about. Okay, UN uh, consists of... Text file, log file. Um, there was aggregation none, but we want that we want the ones that have the highest. Here we go. We're finally approaching what we need. The year and resolution estimate can the data layer and facility file, the separate document and text file. Okay. Population density, which is we don't want. We want count, which should be numerical. Um. the hell? I think population count is further further down. Okay, well, how do I find them, Mr. Emacs? Uh-oh. I normally use events to look at stuff like this. Um... Wow. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Doc view, please. Magic. Magic, please happen. Okay. I'm going to tree. I'm going to tree. 
I'm a tree, I'm a tree, I'm a tree. Alright, there we go. Um, so we went right to this one, right? We went right to page 14-ish. Maybe I didn't, maybe I went to the wrong page. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, finally, more blah, 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 blah. consists of for the years the data were produced as global ra rasters as 30 second to enable support. We aggregated some shit for you. The data is uh, each download compa comparing on the net CDF, the data quality layers, and the ancillary files. A separate document is it file it contains oh country level information and sources which we don't care about. Oh, so that's all they're going to talk about now. Population, that's the end of that part. Um, okay, let's go back to the table of contents and see if they actually talk about how the f flip in hell this data is actually, what the, what the data actually means. Okay, how to use the data? Well, that might be where we need to be. National Identifier Grid, basic demographic here. How to use the data? Page 23. They, that's you can't. I think this is what they're going to tell us. Um, Jesus effing Christ. Just tell us what the fuck the data represents. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Don't w I want to know what you're storing, you idiots. <sighs> Motherfucker. Okay. We have this in text. I mean, you know, we have this at CIA grid stuff, so, and directly from them. Uh, let's see what this is. Jesus Christ, dudes. I mean, seriously? What's wrong with you people? Okay, that's all of it. Um, of course, the, the solution here would be to ping these idiots and ask them, um, since you gave us no real useful information in the webinar yesterday or two days ago. Um, how about telling us how to, you know, actually use your fucking piece of data that's a piece of shit? Um, you might, I, you know, I might be a little bit more polite than that, but uh, not really a lot more polite. So we're stuck now at the point of actually getting data um, that has some degree of meaning. Um, if we assume that the, uh, that the, uh, TIFF file and the data file and the AAI grid file have the same data, we might actually be able to figure out how to convert the, uh, the sorry, the EHDR file. We might actually be able to still convert that data directly from EHDR because really this is uh, six gigs of data right here that is completely redundant. And uh, I guess I could bzip compress it or something, but uh, maybe I should. I think that's how it's stored on my machine. Um, But, uh, yeah, so that might be helpful. Um, I don't know how f helpful that would be, actually. Okay, we've been going for about an hour, ten minutes, and I don't think, I don't see a real progress path from where we are right now. And I do want to send them some email and tell them they're freaking morons. Um... <sighs> Okay. All right, so I'm going to end the stream. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, talk to you later, imaginary people.